in the media, we're on page 88. Um, oh, yesterday we spoke about this idea of, of, uh, of you know, Kadosh, 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 the idea of the three different, the three different planes that we live inside of spheres, spheres of our existence. Well, um, on, on page, uh, at the bottom of page 86, so now on page 88, right? right. Again, I don't want to go into this because I don't really understand very much about it, but there are different kinds of angels. Um, some are called Ofanim, some are Chaya Sakoidesh, some of them are called Srafim. Dif different, li different levels of angelness, right? Some are higher, some are lower. Um, but the idea, it's interesting, the idea of everybody coming together in order to sing praise to God. So, Boch, Kvod Hashem, where it's bolded over here, so that's supposed to be recited out loud. We're everybody together. Um, then the bracha, at the end of the bracha, there's a, uh, the, sorry, the next paragraph at the end, there's a bracha, Baruch Hashem Yodzer HaMoyrois, that God fashioned the luminaries, right? What, what are the luminaries? The luminaries <coughs> are the sun and the moon. And then we move on to the, the, the bracha that comes before the Shema. The bracha before the Shema is a very important bracha. It's going to build up a whole dimension over here of our relationship with God. But it's Ava Rabba Av Tanu Hashem Elokeinu that God, with an abundant love... Now, I think we spoke about this once in the past, but we're going to just have a touch on it again very quickly. If you take a look on page 258... Now, for some of you, this is going to be a little bit difficult because, you know, it requires a certain dexterity and not to, not to lose a pace on page 88, but to get to page 258 as well. And you'll see that the bracha before the Shema in Mairi, but the evening services is a little bit different. Instead of saying, Ava Rabba, Avtanu Hashem Elokeinu, that God has an abundant love for us, we say, Avat Olam, that God has an eternal love. What's the difference between the two? So the difference between the two is reflecting the difference between the status of the morning service and the nighttime service. Mm -hmm. In the morning, everything is clear. So when everything is clear, when you've got daylight, everything is clear and you can see, right, your relationship with God can be defined in a more definitive fashion. So we spell it out. Avaraba, that God has an abundant love. Of Chemla Gadori Vitera Chamalta Aleinu. And we're going to go through, we're going to try to describe what it is. Whereas at nighttime, where we're talking, nighttime is always sim symbolic of being in the exile, of not having clarity. So the nighttime, all we can say is Avat Alam, that we believe that God has an eternal love for us, right? Even though it's hard to see it because it's nighttime out there and nothing is clear anymore. And it reflects a difference in the two, the two statuses. I guess that's stay tight, right? The two... No, statuses, statuses is correct. Because it's Greek, not Roman. Not Latin, rather. Like octopuses is, is proper. Octopi. No, it's octopuses because it's Greek, not, not Latin. Wait a minute, if you take it and you put it into a crust, <laughs> that's not an octopi? <laughs> it's, it's, it depends it, on the shape of the uh, pan uh, that you're baking. Etymologically <laughs> speaking, o o o o <laughs> octopi is accepted now just because of its, use, of its common usage, but the proper, the proper etymology of it is octopuses. He's flat for it, right? He's floundering. Just know that. <laughs> Just know. He's like he's like flaying his eight arms around and trying to wiggle I his way out of. I think you'll find that the if somebody wants to look it up here, Ben, if you want to do something constructive, what? look just look up the plural of octopus. Okay. That's right. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. If you're right, then I am prepared to backtrack and say that that's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> and if I am right, then I am happy to accuse you of being a blithering fool. Okay. Okay. Deal. We'll see, see how it goes. <laughs> in the middle, how did we get onto octopi? For goodness sake. Oh, stati, right. But it's really statuses right. because it's a Greek word and not a Latin word, as everybody knows. Um, <laughs> even though I think you'll probably find that the plural of status is stati, actually. Um, you know, I, when I went to school <clears throat> many, many years ago, Baruch Hashem, it was easier when I was in school. At least history was because there was a lot less of it. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, I, I learned Latin in school. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So my, my, my teachers were even sorrier, actually. Mm. Um, but uh, it, w it was a very miserable, a very, very miserable experience. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I don't want to think about it. Okay, anyway, <laughs> Ava Rabba, let's go back to page 88 over here. Ava Rabba, that, that we're, we're building up, we're defining our relationship with God. We get to the end of the bracha on the next page, and you see that the bracha is like this. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. I found it. Yeah. Okay, so there's three plural forms. Oh, really? Yeah. We're all going to uh, be right over here. Uh, 
have for octopuses? Octopuses, octopi, and octopodes. Don't like the last one. Octopodes. Don't like octopodes. that at all. Well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. <laughs> ben, next time, what? Oh, just say, oh. it says here octopi. You don't need to oh. read out the other ones. You really well, don't. You no, know, it says here octopi. <laughs> <laughs> the real question is what makes a word correct. Is it how it's used or is it, or what's it? Oh, for sure. Oh, it's the, the, the usage. Well, 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 Absolutely. Octopuses is the most commonly used plural form in the UK and the US. Octop uh, octopodes is rare, rarely used, but octopi is the type. Okay, look, anyway, listen, listen, I think, I think, I personally, I think we've learned far too much about octopi or octopods or octopuses um, than anybody that, that we ever wanted to know, actually. Or it's um, status, you know, I, I just think it's... Yes, whatever. Uh, but if, if anybody wants to check up to see what the plural status is... I will. Um, also, then, I'll, I'll email you an article. It's the same thing, it just gives multiple ones. Yeah, it might be state st stat pod, um, status, status, status pod, pod. Status, status pod, status pod, status pod, whatever. Okay. Anyway, we're getting, we're getting. I, I think we're we're getting uh, we're getting uh, off. Starting to enjoy ourselves. <laughs> no, we can't, we can't have fun. Forbidden. That's not we're what we're in this world for. <laughs> um, says says the blessing on page ni page ninety. Says the blessing before we begin the Shema. Uh, it says Baruch Ata Hashem Aboyche Ba'Amu Yisrael Ba'Ava that God chose His people Israel with love. What, what is the significance of this particular blessing over here? Rabbi Akiva Ego, one of the great scholars from a couple of hundred years ago, he says like this. He says that when we begin to recite the Shema, one of the first things we say is, that we, we love God. Says Rabbi Akiva Ego, that the very, very interesting concept, that love is something which needs to be reciprocated. In order for love to work, it needs to be a two-way street. Right? In, in fact, the word Ahava in Hebrew... So Rav Desla, one of the great thinkers of the previous generation, says that the, the, uh, the word ava comes from the word have. Have means to give. Which means, how do you show somebody that you love them? You give. You give to them, right? You take away from them. That's, that's well, actually, I mean, somebody, somebody, somebody has to, you're right. <laughs> you know, if we're all giving, then nobody's going to take. So I, I am volunteering to, uh, to be the taker <laughs> um, so that you people can all be givers, otherwise you're not Great going to be able to... Are, are you kidding? This is, this is the most unbelievable selflessness. I, I'm not sure that you're ever going to experience anything quite like this ever again, actually. I, <coughs> I haven't, haven't actually <laughs> noticed it having an effect on anybody because no one gave me anything. But uh, Ava, I think the idea of Ava, it's very, it's very true that in order to love, real love is love which is reciprocated, which means you love the person, the other person loves you. And one of the ways, one of the simplest ways of showing somebody that you love them is by, by giving to them, whether it's giving to them physically, whether it's giving to them emotionally, whether it's giving to them spiritually, whatever it is. What, what don't you agree with? I'm not sure that only. No, not only, but what, one of the most basic, one of the most basic maybe methods it's come of... come from this, maybe they want to know this. Oh, Rav Dessa, okay, so go take, you know, go, go you. argue with Rav Dessa, don't, don't argue with me. No, I don't <laughs> argue, so it says, 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 says Rabbi Akiva Ega, very beautiful idea. We make the bracha, before we begin the Shema, before we swear our love, our allegiance of love to God, we first hear, Baruch Hashem, that God chose us with love. God loves us. And we are now able to love God back because that's a two-way street. It's something which is reciprocal. Um, can I say something here? About, you just about did, really. When before... Um, did. When, when it talks about the different angels and everything and how with great noise they raise themselves yes that, um, it, it they're they're praising Hashem just like we are yes and just like us they they don't know anything more about the complete Hashem than we do so they're doing the same thing I don't know is that is that right? I don't know. Is, I don't is that a bit true? I, I, the, uh, isn't it that angels don't have, they don't have the concept of... of I, I, I tell you, look, I tell you like this. I, I personally am angelic, but I don't know very much about angels. It's a very, it's a very esoteric, you know, it's a very Kabbalistic dimension. I don't know, I, I have no idea. If what, it could be that what you're saying is true. I don't, I don't know enough about it to be able to say one way or the other. What angels do? I, I, I personally, 
Um, I would have thought that angels must have a, a much greater understanding of God than we do because they're completely spiritual beings. And their spirituality, you know, they, they don't have any physicality to get in the way of their, of their understanding God. It may be, but it may be that they don't understand God in it, you know, the concept of God in its entirety. Is it like a midrash that they they wanted the Torah and they didn't understand why humans mm -hmm. got it? Yeah. It's not midrash the Gemara. I mean, you know, it's, it's an agarit. It's, it's found in the Gemara. But you have to understand the Chatam Sofer says like this. So just to understand, because the, the Gemara itself, it cries out for explanation. When the angels, that you know, Moshe comes upstairs to God in order to receive the Torah, and the angels say, no, don't give it to him. It belongs to us. Well, what belongs to them, for goodness sakes? What? So it says that Moshe said to them, I don't know, it says over here that, you know, that, uh, that we left Egypt. You weren't in Egypt, right? So it doesn't mean you. It says over here, you know, Loi Sigma, if you shouldn't steal, hey, but you people don't steal, so that's not for you, right? And that was the, the end of the argument, right? You've got this incredible theological moment that the, 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 uh, you know, the, the ultimate debate ever in the world of Moshe Rabbeinu debating the angels, and it sounds like something out of kindergarten. It really does, right? You know, it says over here that you're not allowed to steal, and you don't steal, therefore it's ours, right? I mean, it's like, hello? Can, can you come up with something a little, bit, a little bit deeper than that? So first, first of all, the Chassam Sofer explains like this, but I think just to understand the Gemara properly, it says that the minute... God says to Moshe Rabbeinu, come up here and hold on to my throne and tell them why the Torah belongs to you. Says the Chassam Sofer, that was the end of the debate. Because the angels, well, what's the chart? The Torah is there for us to use down here in the physical world in order to elevate us and turn us into spiritual beings. Angels don't need that, they're spiritual. The only, the only creation in the world which has a duality of physicality and spirituality are human beings. Right. Animals are physical. Angels are spiritual. Human beings fall in between the two. And the Torah, hold on a second. The Torah, the Torah is there in order to elevate us. So that's, if that's the truth, then what on earth, what, what, did, what did the angels want over here? What do you mean? It's ours, don't give it to him. So explain to Chassam Sofer, there are two, there are two Torahs. There is a Torah which is completely and absolutely spiritual. In its, in its entirety, it's spiritual. And then there's a physical dimension of the Torah, which is the Torah which tells over the stories, and it tells over that the Jews were in Egypt, and they came out of Egypt, and it's a Torah which, which tells you what you should do and what you shouldn't do, right? So what is Moshe answer then? Huh? So, what is so the Moshe, the, the Sofer explains that the, 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 the Lashon of the Gemara is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, hold on, to my, hold on to my chair and argue with them. So the Chassam Sofer says that by God saying to Moshe, hold on to my chair, he's already, fit. the argument is now over, the debate's over, because mm -hmm. he's showing the angels that you don't, you don't need it. Well, <laughs> well they, they need both of these things because that's what they are, physical and spiritual. Why, 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 how does he get that from holding on to my chair? Because the only, the only dimension of creation that can hold on to God's throne is human beings. Oh. Right, which means that, you know, again, what's the idea? The only dimension in creation that can reach beyond the physical and become spiritual are human beings. Right, the rest of us, you know, the rest, the rest of creation is not like that. What about the other parts of the Torah, the spiritual part? So that's what he's saying. He's that God's saying like this, that a spiritual dimension of the Torah required down here mm. in order to take the physicality and to, to blend the two together. To be, to be, if you don't have the spiritual dimension of the Torah, mm. you can't grow now. So is, does that mean there's like an antagonism <coughs> between angels and humans, or that there is a there is a, a a natural I don't know if it's antagonism, but there is a natural separation between them. Engineered Sahara. What about it? I'm I'm all for it. Really. Isn't the Sahara the bigger the better described as <laughs> like an an angel? Not not really, but yet the Yet Sahara is a drive. Mitzvah Hashem, we'll talk about. I don't think we're going to get there today, but but uh, Mitzvah Hashem on Sunday, we'll talk the about the Yetzirah. Yetzirah. It's part. It's it's an integral part of the person. The Yetzirah, the Yetzirah is not. Even though in some places, you know, it's, it's all it's all described as being one thing. So, for example, when it says by uh, Rashi explains that the the uh, the angel that came and fought with Yaakov was the Yetzirah. That was the Malach Hamaves. That was the, the you know the, the angel of death, and that was the the angel of of Esav. But it's talking about concepts. The Yetzirah itself is something, Mitzvah Shem will talk about it on Sunday at much greater length, but the Yetzirah is something which we, we need in order to grow. 
and it's a part of who we are. It really is. It's something that something that belongs to us, and something that we have to learn how to control. Um, perhaps I wanted to tell you something. Oh, I, I just—it's it, a little bit of a side issue, but I think it's—I think it's, it's most incredible idea. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole Gemara with the Gemara, the Gemara on in, in Shabbos on Pei Ches says tells over the story of what happened when the Jewish people were supposed to re the, receive the Torah at Sinai, and it says that God went to the other nations of the world and He says to them, "Do you want my Torah?" And He went to the Bnei Yishmael, and Bnei Yishmael said, "Well, what does it say?" Right? And it says over there, "Lo signal if you're not allowed to steal." And they say, oh, you know, rats, you know, we'd love to do this, but uh, we can't not steal. And then he goes to B'nai Seir, to Esav, and they say, oh, you know, this sounds great. What's in it? And God says, well, it says, no, you not allowed to murder. And they say, oh, what a shame. You know, we, we would really love to do this, but, you know, we can't do this. Right? Uh, the, the, the whole series of, right, different things over there. But, it, you know, it's an interesting thing. If you're paying attention... You know, if, if God would have come to them and said, they said, what's in it? And he would have said, listen, you know, when you're eating a watermelon on Shabbat in the summer, you've got to be careful with the pits, how you eat. If you put the watermelon in first, or you take the pits out because there's a concept called bora, then I can understand why the other nations of the world would say, what? <laughs> are you, are you what did you just say? But what did God tell them? You Don't can't steal, steal you can't murder. Those are not Jewish commandments. Those are universal commandments. The Sheva Mitzvahs Ben Noach, right? There's the seven Noachide laws. Which means when, when Esau says, Oh, are you for real? Gosh, I can't do that. You can't tell that to God. You, you hear the prayer? Everyone, everyone else Every, the everybody, the whole world is, is commanded not to murder. The whole world is commanded not to steal. Which means that the choice that God uses is odd. And the reaction of the people is even odder. What, what do you mean? How can you say, how can you say that? Right? You, you, you hear the problem, right? It's like, it's like getting up in court and saying, you know, I'm sorry I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I killed him. I really am. But you know what? I, can't, I really can't live by these things. I just, I can't. I'm sorry. And the court's going to say, oh, you know, that's a very compelling argument. You know what? He should go free. Right? But he'll murder other people. Well, what can you do? I mean, that's just who he is, you know? Wasn't it similar to how God... Pardon Pharaoh's heart so that they could never say that they were denied the Torah even though they wanted it. No, because that's not fair. That means the whole thing, the whole thing is a put up job. Which means I'm going to come along, I'm going to come along and offer you something that I know that you don't eat, right? Because I know I want to eat it, right? But I want to show you how generous I am. And I know that you don't eat, I don't know, green peas, right? Isn't that the same as what happened with Pharaoh then? No, Pharaoh is different. Pharaoh reaches a point where. He's, he's lost his ability to be able to choose. It depends which, 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 uh, which approach you take, right? One approach is, the, the Rambam, Maimonides, Mon says that he, lo he lost his free will. He was so wicked in the end that God says, you know what, T forget it. The Sforna has got a, a fascinating approach to Paro. The Sforna says that, no, if you want, you know, you want to go head to head against God, you've got to be pretty strong, right? So Paro has his heart hardened so that he can do whatever he wants. God does that to him? Or... God does it to him so that he can, he can decide whether he wants to let the Jewish people go because he wants to let him go. Can you imagine, you know, you, 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 uh, you steal. There's like a, a seven foot tall, you know, enormous muscles on muscles on muscles fellow standing next to you, right? And you steal his wallet. And he kind of, you know, towers over and he says, give me my wallet back. And you're like, what, what are you going to say? You're going to say, of course. <laughs> are you kidding? It's yours. For sure. <laughs> Whatever you want. Not that fast. <clears throat> <laughs> but we're not true. we're not taking the chance over here, okay? <laughs> we're talking about me. I'm not that fast either. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, chat, did he give the wallet back because he, he wanted to give the, the wallet back? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> here, take this, take my house, take my wallet. Take oh. my mother in law. <laughs> 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 Then for sure he'll beat you up. But, the, uh, <laughs> but, but Hipshot, you, is, are you giving the wallet back because you, it's the right thing to do? Because that's a moral, ethical thing to do? Of course oh, not. Nice. You're giving it back because you're going to rip your limbs off one by one if you don't, right? Thank you, thank you. So it's the same thing. Where God, God comes to Paro, right? God, God is our, you know, seven foot tall, muscly, you know, enormous uh, figure. And Paro's like, uh, oh, let the Jewish people, of course, <laughs> why didn't you say so? I would love to, right? But he's not doing what he wants to do. So God, hard that's what the Sforna says, that God hardens his heart 
in order that Paro can react in the way that he wants to react, which means that he could he could choose to let the people go, but he's doing it on an equal footing with God, right? So one yeah. approach is that his free will is taken away, the other approach is that his free yes. will is Yes, yes, it's being enhanced, yeah. Op opposite, opposite ideas, they really are. I heard, I heard that uh, with the thought that you just pointed out that I heard that before like Moses came under God's command to tell Pharaoh let the people go that Pharaoh's free will was actually he didn't have and like whenever Moses did come to Pharaoh it, it was like given back to him oh yeah yeah that's interesting okay I don't know sounds interesting it's been looked into a little bit in the meantime, let's go go back go go back to giving giving the Torah to the to the Jewish people, right? So it's a, I saw once that there's a commentary called the Simchas Aram. It's a Hasidish commentary. He says like this: It doesn't fit in so neatly with the words, but it's a fascinating idea. What would he mean that the Jewish the the, 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 the non-Jewish nations turn around to God and they say, you know, we can't not steal or we can't not murder? That's a ridiculous thing to say to God, right? right. So what are they saying? Rather, they're not saying they're saying like this. Okay, you don't want us to murder, we won't murder. But don't you tell us that by not murdering we're going to become better people. You don't want us to steal, fine, we won't steal. But don't you tell us that by not stealing, that's going to turn us into better people. There's a dimension inside of the mitzvahs that we do, right? Every mitzvah that we do, there's a physical dimension. But there's a dimension which every mitzvah is turning us into better people than we were a moment ago. We're more connected to God, we're more aware. Right? They're coming along and they're saying like this, okay, listen, I understand, the seven mitzvahs been Enoch, right? I understand, we've got to live together as a community, I get that, okay, right? I'm fine with that, I, you know, yes, I would love to go into your house and I would love to steal your silver candlesticks, but I understand that if I do that to you, you'll do it to me, right? So we'll make a little rule over here that nobody can steal from anybody. Good, okay. But don't tell me, you know, bubamices, that by, by, by not stealing your candlesticks, I'm now a better person than I was before. Don't you tell me how to be a better person. What did the Jews say in that story? <laughs> what did the Jews, the Jews say? The, the Jews, Jews reacted the Jews. in the strangest way of all. Sure, we'll take it. They said, Nasa Vanishma. Actually, they said like this, how much is it? It's yeah. free. Oh, we'll take two. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, you know, uh, the Jews like to haggle a little bit, you know that. But, uh, that's like the famous joke about Moshe coming down Harsina. He says, okay, guys, he said, I've got some good news and some bad news. So they say, okay, what's the good news? He said, well, I got him down from 15 to 10. <laughs> but what's the bad news? He said, I'm afraid that not stealing is still in there. <coughs> well, you know, we try, whatever, we try our best, we really do. <coughs> the, the, the Jewish people, they said, they said the immortal words, Nasa Vanishma, we will do and we'll learn. A very strange reaction. The Jewish people are the most, the mo the Jewish people are the most, the most critical, the most questioning people in the world. Right? Just look around the room, for goodness sakes. And, and, and what is God comes along and says, okay, you know, you want my Torah? And what do they do? They roll over on their tummies and say, okay, tickle my tummy. You ever heard of such a reaction? Jews, Jews, can you imagine? Now, seven ishma, sure, whatever you say. What's Pshat? The Pshat's very simple, no? When God offers you something, so what, I understand, what are you going to ask about? If you can imagine for one second, stretch your imaginations as far as they can go and imagine that your parents love you. Right? <laughs> Okay, I can see this is beyond some of you. Okay, but whatever. <laughs> like your parents love you. They care for you. They only want the best for you. And one day you come home. You, you know this, right? One day you come home and they've got like a package. And they say to you, sweetheart, here, we bought you a present. And you're like, well, hold on a second. I'm calling my lawyer. I'm not <laughs> opening this until I've got a lawyer present. And then we'll see whether we want it or not. If we want it, I'll take it. If not, I don't. No, nobody does that. I mean, if you do, then something's not quite right in your relationship with your parents, right? <laughs> you understand? Your parents love you. They want only what's best for you. Whatever they bought, you, whatever they bought for you, for sure, is, is good for you, right? God, God himself, comes to the Jewish people and says, Hey, you want my child? What, what are you going to say? I don't know. What's in it? Can I have two? <laughs> You're here. Which means, according to the Gemara, the, the answer is very simple. The very fact that the other nations of the world said to God, What's in it? is already an indication that they're not on the level of being able to accept it. What do the Jewish people do? The Jewish people say the most incredible thing. They say, Nasa, we'll do it. Unconditional. The Nishman, and we'll learn about it. Tell us about it. But you understand that the beauty of Nasa, the Nishma is what? That we'll do it even if we don't want to do it, we'll do it. And even, even if we don't like it, we'll do it. And even, even if we don't want to do it, we'll do it. Did this happen? Nasa. 
Yeah, it be yeah, nationalized. it's an unconditional it statement. Be nationalized. It should be per, it should be one so what's the pshat? It's, nishma really means we will listen, right? From the word shma. The problem is, you can't say we will do and we will listen, because that doesn't make any sense, right? Okay, I'm going to do it. Just afterwards, tell me what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So nasa means I'll means do it. Learn in the huh? Toshma. 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 Yeah. Let's come learn, right? Same, same way we learn Shema. Yeah, absolutely, right? Well, we'll see him it's Hashem on Sunday. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu. We'll see over there. But it's not, it's not here, not listen. Internalize. Right? That's, really, that's really, you know, Nishma. Nasa and Nishma will do it, and then we'll internalize it, and we'll learn about it, and we'll transfer it from one generation to the next. But it's not dependent on the NASA. The NASA we're going to do anyway, we're, right? We're, it's unconditional. But you understand why it needs to be unconditional. We, we, we all understand this. Because if it's, not, if it's conditional, then it means that everyone's going to end up keeping the mitzvahs that they like. And then, okay, all the Jews, some will be keeping this, others will be keeping that. This one won't do this. He won't like that. He doesn't want this. He doesn't want that, right? That's not, <clears throat> you, you can't do that. It doesn't work. Mm-hmm.